Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive at Higher Things. And joining me again today is Michelle Bauman, who is the director of Why for Life. It's always great to have you here, Michelle. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me back. It's a privilege to have you. Um, so we started a thing uh, before the news got a little bit uh, newsy uh, for, <laughs> for life issues. Uh, we, we started talking about life issues in all 10 commandments and not just sort of the, the fifth and the sixth. Uh, and it might just maybe be time to pick that up again. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's cover two today. Let's cover the third and the fourth. Like it. Uh, if we, if we can, you know, if we, if we talk too much, then we can just postpone and do number four the next time. But, but I think, um, they kind of work together in many ways. So remember the Sabbath day, right? Uh, third commandment. How does that even relate to life? This is an easy one, right? Okay. It's because the Sabbath day is, is on the Sabbath day. We go to church, yeah. right? We go to church and we go to the place where life is given, when we hear the word of life, when we taste the bread of life uh, through the sermon, through the readings, through communion, um, <clears throat> we we get to actually experience life. Uh, it, it is fed to us, right? So when we when we uh, it's it's that tree of life that's brought right to where we are. So when we don't go. When we don't go, we're really turning away from God's gift, it, not only his command to receive life from him uh, and to be strengthened in that, but, but then we turn away from life, which, of course, because we know our Bible, <laughs> we know that that goes right back. It harkens back to creation. Mm -hmm. And it's that turning toward death that Adam and Eve choose to do um, when they when they choose to take. Um, a bite of death uh, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and so that commandment keeps us not only in the place where we can continue to grow, where we can continue to be connected to the vine um, and, and become that, that branch that bears fruit, but also for us that we might uh, not, our faith might not shrivel up, right? That our, that our life might be preserved through through the gift of life that is offered in the service. Absolutely. Uh, the, the third commandment, I think, is really important for this because it shows that, well, first of all, the life that we're talking about in life issues is eternal. It, it's not just sort of make good choices until you die a natural death and then we'll move on. But it's, it's rather God's will for you is life. And it's it's so uh, so intent is God on this, that, that he actually makes himself present in your church to, to deliver life to you. Uh, and that, that also really matters when you deal with life issues in the law and you realize that you're a sinner. Um, right. The third commandment is where God forgives you. So if, if you have yeah. broken God command, God, God's commandments, where, where if you have sinned and fallen short, if, if you have struggled with life issues, if you have wrestled with abortion in church, Jesus delivers to you forgiveness. Your abortion mm -hmm. is forgiven in church. Right. He, he continues. He continues to forgive daily those life issues and, and to strengthen you so that you might uphold others that are going through it. Right. And so that you might be upheld. Um, you know, some life issues are going to be long term. They're not going to go away um, because they're because of sin. Our bodies are broken. Our relationships are broken. And so we need that strength from day to day. You know, I think of mental health. I think of uh, broken relationships with divorce and family and, and the elements of that. I even think death, death in a family. Um, when important things happen, when big occurrences, the next Christmas, the baptism of your child, uh, the, you know, these important events, when you want that loved one there and, and you're mourning, um, you're experiencing that life issue, you are strengthened by God so that you might, you might have hope you might have that hope renewed and that those promises are told to you again and again so that so that you might uh, again rejoice in the life that God has given you and hold fast hold fast to the gifts so yeah absolutely great so that's the third commandment and and life issues what about the fourth honor your father and mother yeah so honor your father and mother um, so Father and mother, these vocations are life-giving, life-affirming vocations. So um, God uses mothers and fathers to bring lives into the world. And he, we know that our God is, a, is 
a lover of life, right? He loves life. Our God is a God of life, uh, not a God that, that of death. He, he intended for us to live forever. And the way that he does that is through the creative process uh, of a man and a woman coming together. And so we honor these things when we honor our mother and father. We honor the gift of life that, that they have given us. Um, and, and that gift of life, you know, it starts at the moment uh, that an egg and a sperm come together. But um, immediately after that, parents are already sacrificed and sacrificing and providing uh, for our lives. The mother in particular, our mother um, clothes and feeds us and provides protection for us for those first nine, nine months, even as our father is hopefully providing for her as well. So that gift is kind of like a giant hug, right? So he's he's uh, caring for the mom, so the mom can carry for the baby, uh, for can care for the baby, and and uh, in his service to his wife and and his children through protecting her, through provision, um, through through spiritual headship. Um, he is also providing for the life of that child. So, and then of course, once the child's born, um, the father gets to be much more hands-on. Uh, in that provision, in, in the clothing and caring for and the changing of diapers and the feeding when possible. Um, and and when, we, when we honor father and mother, we're not just honoring them, but we're also honoring the role that they play, the vocation that God has given them, and the gift that God has given them as well as us. Um, we recognize that parents are a gift uh, and, and God does his work through them, uh, whether that's, again, physical care, but also spiritual care. So our parents bring us to church. Our parents introduce us to the faith. These are good gifts from God, and, and they are life-affirming gifts. Absolutely. So, yeah. so we, we see God creating life through the family, which of course makes it worthy of honor that he cares for us. And, and it also starts to shape then the other authorities that we as Lutherans start to recognize in the fourth commandment as well. Um, so right. we, we can see then, you know, you, you have a church, you have a, a pastor, you have uh, God working to care for your soul through the authorities given in your church. And again, this is this is to sort of meet your parents, meet your family and, and provide spiritually for that. And, and you also have a government. Um, and this is where I, I guess, um, the news enters into the situation again, but it also shows the role of the government. It, it's to protect yeah. and defend life. That's right. The government is established to protect life. And when it does, uh, then we, we continue to honor and uphold it. Um, the government is called to establish order. And sometimes that order is, is difficult to see, but that order is necessary. No life is affirmed and upheld when we have disorder or chaos. Um, and, and government is supposed to reflect the order that God establishes in creation, the order that God carries out in our life, um, the, the, the orders that he intends for us. So again, when the government does its work by caring for those who uh, need, need assistance, by making society safe, um, then we, we honor and, and we obey and we uphold. Um, when the government doesn't, uh, when it doesn't uphold life through laws, then we, we find a way to speak uh, and to encourage the government to do the job that the government is called to do. And that is to, to uphold life, to protect the weak and the, and the innocent, um, to, to keep those who cannot keep themselves safe, safe. So we have a, a Christians have a phenomenal role um, in the government, not only in honoring, but also upholding it and encouraging the government to do the things God has called the government to do. Absolutely. And I think probably one of my favorite parts about the fourth commandment is that it's given to sinners. It's given yes. to sinners as parents and it's given to sinners who, who are struggling even in Israel or as well in, in Egypt. The, the wilderness after leaving Egypt with government. Um, they, they don't get along together. There's bickering, there's quarreling, that, that God would give the fourth commandment. It, it's not dependent on having a perfect government or having perfect parents or having a perfect uh, man and a woman who are married together. But it, it's a recognition that this is what God wills as, as good and builds up society. But, but more so, uh, this is what God has promised to work through even when they're sinners, which means you don't need a perfect government for God to still be present and working through it. You don't need perfect parents 
parents are a perfect situation. So many times God will, will sort of reach down and, and find another way to care for life, to promote life and protect life because it's, it's, it's his desire that, that well, that we live. Right. And we know that God works good in all things for his people. Mm-hmm. So, so the government is going to be broken at times. It is going to be sinful because it is run by sinful people. And yet God's will and God's, God's um, a, a firm affirmation of life is still going to happen because, because God is greater than that. So, and, and that reminds us too, that our trust is not in the government, uh, even though we honor it, even though we, we um, understand that God intends to use it for our good sometimes the government is wrong. And sometimes, uh, and, and so we don't put our trust in, in things that are fallible. We don't put our trust in things that, that will change, uh, in, in the, in the wisdom of men, we put our trust in the wisdom of God. And when the government upholds that wisdom, uh, we, we rejoice in that, um, this summer, the government upheld the wisdom of God, uh, June 24th, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, prime example of the government doing its work um, and allowing allowing the discussion to be had. So, absolutely, and, and we continued. I mean, even I remember talking about that. That that doesn't mean sort of your work is done or our work is done, but rather now we get to point to the broken families and, and offer help and offer assistance in, in in the exact same way. Because just like sometimes. Governments are broken by sin. Sometimes families are too. And so the role of the Christian isn't just to cast down blame, but it, it, it's to love, it, it's to speak truth, and it's to find hope in Christ. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Michelle, that's that's two commandments. We did pretty good today. <laughs> that's right. We got through them. I'm impressed. Uh, Michelle Bauman is the director of Y for Life. You should check them out. They're on the TikTok now doing awesome stuff. They're, they're on all the socials, yforlife.org. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. See you next time.